and welcome to the next video. This is the third part of the Le Mans mini series that I've been uh, making in Assetto Corsa. This time we are not going to be in VR uh, because we have quite a lot of cars and uh, it's taking quite a lot of performance out of my machine. So we're going to go in the flat screen so uh, you can actually see my face in this video. I know the most interesting part of this uh, series, right? But anyway, I'm going off topic here. Um, Anyway, we are in the 1985 version of Le Mans, so we will see how the track has developed further this time, uh, what kind of safety features have been added, and we are in the Kunos content Porsche 962C long tail, uh, joined by quite a lot of mods. Uh, in the background there we can see the Jaguar uh, XJ15, I believe is the correct designation. But we have Cougars, Domes, uh, you have the BMW M1, uh, I found quite a lot of mods for this era. Maybe not all of them are exactly correct and wouldn't be driving in this specific year, but I, I use them anyway because I, I just think it brings great diversity to, to, the, to the field. Um, and yeah, of course, everything will be linked down in the description below if uh, you want to take a look at it. Uh, we're going to do a seven lap race with time acceleration so that we can again experience the full span. So morning, uh, afternoon, uh, midday, midnight, and so on, so that we have a really full experience of the 24-hour race in around about 24 minutes. Anyway, uh, enough uh, talking. I need to put on my uh, my safety uh, gloves, <laughs> and uh, I'll see you on the track. Okay, here we go. Waiting for the lights to come on and to come off. AI is slow off the line. We'll try not to abuse this too much. In the beginning. Uh, this is of course down to Assetto Corsa AI just being Assetto Corsa AI. And it's also not helped by the fact that we are in a random grid starting starting positions so having multiple classes also means the slower cars are sometimes in the front now in certain cases and AI is having even more difficulties navigating even more differences Ooh. see if we can no, maybe make up some places. Ooh, my word. Here we go, the BMW M1. My god. This is... <laughs> feels almost like a dodgeball tournament here. We have to be dodging other cars. So, let's take it safely here. What's the AI going to do? Yeah, as you can see, a very diverse grid. You cannot even look too much at other cars right now, because of fear of what the erratic AI might do. But yeah, as I said before, we have Porsches, we have Domes, we have Cougars. Uh, cur sorry, Courages, not Cougars. Uh, we have... Uh... Oh, my God. BMW M1. As we passed a couple now down the Mulsanne Strait. Jaguars, of course, as well. I think there's even a Peugeot. Yeah, all the links to all the mods will be down in the link description. I mean, in, in the video description. <laughs> I believe this is a Jaguar in front of us. Is it? 
It is. White and green livery. No place to go again. We're just gonna play it safe here. No place to go. We have a BMW M1 in front. It's rather huge compared to the prototype cars. He won't come after me again into the corners, into the four chicanes. And that's a very intense lap one done. Where we now go full speed up the Dunlop, uh, Dunlop curve. Or almost up sp uh, full speed because we have to brake. Because AI is again tussling for positions. Yet again, another slower class car in front of it, in front of us, actually. Which means we have to be careful. Now we can fly past in our Porsche 962C long tail. Uh, we are running 100% boost, so we will be quicker on the straights from the AI. And even so, the Porsche is probably the quickest in a straight line on this grid. And running 100% boost also means that exiting out of corners is extremely, extremely fun. <laughs> As the tail just keeps kicking around. Three, we're doing 371. Whoa, that was that was tight through the king there. Oh shit! Well, in real life, this would have been terminal. I, I was looking at him all the time and I wasn't sure is he going to try to make the pass or not and at the last moment the AI jumped out from behind the slower class car and yeah we just had no place uh, anymore to go We're running with damage off, of course, because of such things. Because, uh, yeah, driving with the AI, particularly in such a diverse uh, grid, is a risk. <laughs> So yeah, 1985 Le Mans. Uh, as you may have noticed, Maison Blanche is no more. We are now in the Porsche curves. So Maison Blanche will be to the left of us here. Very dangerous section of the track in the past. And in the interest of, of safety, Porsche curves were constructed to to get the racing done in a more safer manner away from Maison Blanche the very fast right left kink with of course a very immovable house there so if you crash there that was pretty much your life oh yeah and to avoid this uh, the racing has been 
moved on to the new Porsche curves that we just traversed and the beginning of the track where we are right now. So the Dunlop curve, the fast uphill right-hander and the SS that we just traversed were still very much the same as before. Tet Rouge, the right-hander that we just uh, went through, was pushed back a little bit uh, because where it was originally uh, before, uh, a roundabout was constructed for traffic because these are public roads after all. And yeah, the roundabout is not really suitable for these kind of race cars. So the corner was pushed back a little bit. That's why you have an additional kink, right hand kink, as you're coming onto the very long, still straight Molson. Well, straight, no chicanes yet, as you can see. And you are reaching just insane speeds, 370 kilometers per hour in this instance. We're just flying past. Crazy to think that drivers back then actually used the Mulsanne straight to relax. Nice relaxing 350 kilometer drive. Then you break heavily for the Mulsanne corner where we are just exiting now and running down to Indianapolis already at 300 kilometers an hour, 330. Now a fast kink to the right. And then Indianapolis to the left, a highly banked corner. And into the slowest corner on the track, Arnage. Behind, I believe, another Jag Jaguar. Jag. Going into the night. Yep, we're going to back out here. So the track previously here would go straight on that way. And we're turning right onto the Porsche curves. Of course, nowadays the Porsche curves are a little bit different. The fences here are still very close to the track. And the area is very forested still to the left here. Nowadays, all of this area is already lit up by bystander attractions. Not much of that here yet. That was a bit of a late send on my part, but I backed out of it. And that was another lap. Yeah, all of those changes were, of course, done in the interest of safety. And some of them, like the Tet Rouge reprofiling was done because of public road changes. Yeah, the previously aforementioned my song. Whoa! A little bit of a wall tap there. <laughs> previously mentioned my song Blanche was, of course, a very dangerous section of the track. That's why we have now the Porsche curves, which are a lot safer. And cars travel, travel at a lot lower speed because my song Blanche was almost full speed already. And the Mulsan straight here is still straight. Very scary in the dark because you see nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. And going over 360 kilometers per hour. The cars are, of course, being developed all the time. They are getting better, safer, more, more aerodynamic, which means more grip in the corners. But still, of course, that's nothing compared to today's machines. And 
of course, no electronics on them. Not even paddle shifters. I still use the, they, or they still use the uh, manual stick shift, which brings an extra bit of uh, fun. Driving these cars, at least for me, it does. I always love to drive stick shift cars. And no traction control, of course. Your traction control is your right foot. And in my case, it's very bad, as you may have noticed a couple of times already. Oh, oh my word. Onto the grass. Thought I missed the braking point there. <laughs> Luckily, we kept outside of the walls. There's a car behind us. I'm going, of course, very aggressively over these curbs in real life, in that day and age. In the race, at least, they would avoid it. Because any additional bump would bring additional strain to all the components. And cars were breaking down a lot more back in the day. But we are in a sim. We can just go aggressive over everything. No need to worry about breaking the car. Just gonna wait for the straight here. To pass these group of this group of cars ahead. There's just so many diverse cars in this grid, I can't even name all of them. I honestly can't, and they're just gorgeous. I think they're just gorgeous. I, I love this era of Le Mans. Even though the later Group C cars are also amazing. But this era has, I don't know, some... By, by later Group C, I mean the 1990s roundabout. That was close. Gingerly on the throttle. One and a half laps more to go. Absolute darkness on the run down to Indianapolis, even though I can see day of light or light of day <laughs> slowly returning. The morning sky is already here. of oversteer. And good morning, sunshine. Miss the apex. Perfect. Let's get those lights turned out, or turned off, actually. Another missed apex. Ooh, that's right to the edge. That 
was an interesting line through four chicanes. Into the morning hours, across the start-finish line. Two more laps, actually. Sun is shining right into our eyes. Perfect. But the view is epic. Almost forgot to break there. <laughs> A little bit of wide through uh, that rouge. Of course, I have no idea in what position we are in. And deliberately don't put any of those hot elements in such races because I want to be fully immersed. Only keep the speedo and pedal for your benefit so that you can see just how gentle I need to be with throttle application. But we are going to see at the end of the race what position we ended up in anyway. I see a couple of cars up ahead. Stop from 360 all the way down to 360. Yeah, this track is a true testament. Or the true test actually for the machine and man. Oh, he's coming back at us. Cheeky. Oh, my God. A little bit of right foot happy. And... The car wanted to go around on us. You might think that just uh, sitting in the cars and driving is not physically challenging or anything. But I'm just sitting in a sim comfortably, I might add. And I'm sweating like crazy. Again, he's coming back at us. <laughs> oh, my friend, that was aggressive over the curb. Oh! Don't think there's any speed limit in those pits, right? <laughs> Had to avoid the AI and ran into the pits. Luckily, the beginning of wall. Luckily, the beginning of the wall is not hard. So we kind of. Uh, Went through it there. Lost a couple of positions here. We are on the final lap. Let's see how much speed can we gain from drafting from a fellow Porsche in the front. But we are going to have to do the overtake before, I think. Yep. Let's move out of the draft. 368. Maybe we'll get a bit more of draft of the, from the car in front. 371, 72. Crazy speeds. 
insane speeds if you ask me. One last time out of Molson Corner. Just love this area of the track, especially in the night because it's just pitch black. Can we gain that another position up in front? So, I think he is a bit too far ahead, unless we can gain the ground through the Porsche curves. Although, from what I've seen in the past few laps, I am slower through here than the AI. I think it won't be enough. Although we are gaining here. Oh. Oops. <laughs> Not how I want it to end. Let's see. Sixth position. We could not gain that final place. But still. Ended in sixth place overall starting in the 50th position so quite quite an interesting uh, interesting race and of course a very hectic one from my part riddled with mistakes but hey you're on my channel <laughs> if you've watched any of my previous videos you know that this is all part of my driving anyway if you made it this far thank you for watching and i hope i will see you in the next one uh yeah, if you liked it, do please leave that like. And if you would not like to not miss the, the next uh, video in this session, do hit that subscribe button down below. And once again, yeah, thank you for watching. It really means a lot. And if you really liked it, I would also appreciate a very nice comment in, uh, in the comment section below. Anyway, have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.